I want to remind you, you were here before, before you became senator, I yes. think. And uh, let's just show everybody how, how good I am at, at what I do. Okay. <laughs> and I understand that you, you turned down, I think President Obama offered you a position and you turned it down to stay where you are, and I, I think that's admirable. But then, then when the, your term is up, uh, you pass the torch to someone else, and then you become senator, and then you become president. How I about appreciate that? you. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. Think about it. I predicted that whole thing. I mean, I, um, you seem to be, uh, have the gift of prophecy. Would you like to tell me what I'm going to do with the rest of my life? Yeah, oh, well, <laughs> the, the first one's free. And okay. then, <laughs> then you got to pay. Um, but I see good things for you. Thank you're, you. you're a good guy. You're a smart guy. So, uh, so you're, you're running for president, and how do you uh, set yourself apart from all of these people running? Because there are a lot, of, a lot of your friends. A lot of great people running. Uh, I have a very different pathway. I think we all do. I, uh, I'm one of those guys that has run to some of our most difficult challenges and was a mayor, had to be a chief executive of a big city at the time, going through a lot of difficulties. But we, and collectively in that community, really turned things around for Newark's fortune. And then uh, my, my theme. I know there's a lot of folks who uh, want to fight fire with fire. I ran a fire department. I don't think that's a good strategy. I'm appealing uh, to the ideal of reviving civic grace and bringing people together. We have so much common cause in this country, a lot of common pain. Uh, and we really need, I think, leaders that are going to call us, not divide us, but call us back to a sense of common purpose. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> yes, because, because there are a lot of people who are angry right now, and the, and the country is it, very, very divided. And I think we do need to bring everybody together and remind us all that we're, you know, this, this, basically the same inside. We all want the same things. There is no, you're wrong and I'm right. But, but people want, you know, toughness, and you seem really uh, sweet and kind, which is a great thing. Right. But, you know, when people say you're not tough enough, what do you say about that? You know, there was an Oscar-nominated documentary that I was in called Street Fight about me coming up through Newark against the, one of the toughest political machines there are. And we show that you can fight the toughest of fights and win, but people make this mistake where they confuse being strong with being mean or being tough with being cruel. You don't have to let yourself be pulled down that you go through, I think, moral vandalism when it comes to your highest ideals. And at a time uh, in this country where we're seeing toxic Twitter trolling and trash talking, I think the best antidote to that, the best thing that's going to win against that is not fighting darkness with darkness, but is bringing light and decency and grace back to our politics. Yes. So, speaking, speaking of tweets and uh, Twitter, uh, this past weekend, uh, our president, uh, I think, tweeted more in, in, a, in a short amount of time than he's ever tweeted before. I mean, it, it was an enormous amount of tweets. And some people are saying he's losing his mind, that he's really losing his mind. Um, what do you say about that, and what tweet upset you the most? Well, look, I, I think what we say about other people often says more about us than it does to who we're talking about. And... Um, that, that is not just a, a constitutional position, the chief executive of our country. It's also a moral platform. And at a time that our country needs redeeming in terms of our connections, we have a president that just seems to continue to want to be doing demeaning. And uh, I think you judge a leader not by how much they push people down, uh, but how much they lift people up. And so those tweets, to me, were uh, <laughs> indicative, indicative of a serious problem. And they are... Uh, you know, there's a Stanford researcher has shown that kindness and decency goes viral. That if you do one kind act witnessed by others, it actually moves m multiple degrees of separation. It's right. as this person studies this. Uh, unfortunately, it's the same thing with, with, with cruelty. Um, and so what do we want uh, sort of from our highest offices in the lands evidenced? And so when you have a guy who... Uh, I knew John McCain. He, he was uh, one of those people when I first came to the Senate that called me to his office, sat me down and gave me incredible advice, not partisan at all, but calling on me to be a statesman. He said, this, this, this Senate has too much particularistic uh, uh, smallness. He said, I want you to be a, a larger senator, uh, be somebody who sets a tone, sets an energy. It was just a great talk as a guy whose office was like a museum to heroism. I mean, literally, you see his lifeless body being pulled out by... The Vietnamese sent him the picture of him when, he, when his plane crashed and he was put into a prison where he was tortured. And to have a, a president who is a commander-in-chief over so many courageous soldiers that are serving for us, men and women, gay, straight, and transgender, tons of soldiers, to see the way he talks about a war hero who is dead now, 
um, to me, that is that is uh, almost uh, uh, repugnant or unacceptable. Yeah, it was it was pretty yeah. horrible. Yeah. It, was, it was pretty horrible. Um, and McCain, I agree. We had McCain on the show, and what a great guy he was. I mean, I just met him one time, and I, I, we we loved him here. He was he was amazing. Yeah, look, I disagreed with him a lot, but there was always a sweetness with him. Yeah. Uh, that uh, when you meet him on the Senate floor, uh, you know, he could be tough at, tough with you, but he was one of those guys that for me was uh, a model of what can be. Yeah. Yes, he was. All right, we'll take a break. More with Cory Booker after this. We are back with Senator Cory Booker, who is and running. Can I just thank you. I want to interrupt yes. right now. I, I think that what you do about, you know, there's a saying I love that you can't lead the people if you don't love the people. And we're talking about politics, but you really are a leader for the, uh, with the spirit of goodness, kindness, and decency. And I want to say this. I want to say this in this way. I have a def patriotism is love of country, but you cannot love your country unless you love your fellow countrymen and women. And that love that you give to me is patriotic in a powerful way, and we need more of that spirit. So thank you for listening. Well, thank you. I, I understand what you're saying, but I will not be your vice president. Um, <laughs> I am busy with the show, but Are thank you. you. Um, so so uh, it came out recently that, uh, that you're dating uh, Rosario Dawson, right? Yes. And uh, so... I'm sure that was something that y'all were trying to keep very private. And then she opened her big mouth and, and no, no, she, no, got, she, she got blabbed TMZ. it. No, I know what happened. Um, you know, she we she was visiting me in D.C. and then she left to the airport and uh, she got a ambushed at the airport. And right. I, I suddenly get this uh, little video from her saying, "I got TMZ and I don't have makeup on. I this and this and that." But she knew that it was. But she it was wonderful and and yeah. she's just a, an incredible human being. Yeah, uh, I think that it's great. I mean, I, it's it's wonderful that y'all are dating and. And I know it's hard because she's going to be watched, and, and you know everything that that she does, everything you do, people are watching you. Yeah, and it's 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 as our relationship grows, it's difficult. But she is just a deeply deeply soulful person, yeah, and she is. has taught me a lot of lessons in, about love already. And that sometimes you show the greatest strength when you make yourself vulnerable. And uh, you know she's really it has this nurturing spirit that's made me more courageous, not just in the love that I project and want to see in our country, but I think even in our personal relationships to love more fearlessly. So I'm very, very blessed with, to be with somebody That's that really makes, sweet. makes me a better That's person. That's really sweet. Yeah. So now that would be an amazing wedding to have in the White House. I mean, if you go in single and then you have a wedding in the White House, I mean, we would watch. That, <laughs> so, would, be like, <laughs> that would be like our royal wedding. That so, would be great. <laughs> So you're saying if Rosario and I get uh, get there, wait. Don't do the marriage before. Uh, For 20, sure, yeah. Uh, wait and have a big thing January, and do it. In the, yeah, and sweeps and it, it would be really important. Would you would you help uh, preside over the wedding? I would do. It? Yes, I'd be a big part of that. Is yes. that a, is that a, is that a promise? Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Um, here's here's what I want you to promise right now because yes. you've mentioned this and I want to know yes. that you really mean it. You said, regardless, if you get the nomination, if you don't get the nomination, you're going to make sure a woman gets in the White House one way or another, president or vice president. We, we saw, first of all, I wanted there to be a woman president in 2016, and I'm, I'm, it's unfortunate there wasn't, but look at the people running right now. We have incredibly talented, capable women and men. We have uh, an openly gay candidate, black candidates. It's just this uh, uh, incredible uh, diversity. We should be a ticket that reflects the diversity of this country, uh, gender diversity, race diversity. And if I am uh, elected as the nominee, I'm going to make sure there is gender diversity on the ticket. So there will be a woman vice president. Um, I, I, uh, so you're, you're a good politician. You I'm not, I'm not trying you to zigzag. You did not answer my question. I think I just answered your question. No, you there didn't. Will be, uh, yes, there will be <laughs> all right. uh, gender diversity on the all ticket. Right. All right. Yes. All right. Yes. Good. And you were saying you're not interested yeah. whatsoever. I'm saying I'm busy. I'm, yeah. You're busy. I and understand I would, that. And I would never want to be in politics. I don't know what you're thinking. Well, um, uh, but I will tell you this. We, we all are in politics. That space, democracy is not a spectator sport. One of the things we're suffering from, I think, in our country is, you know, the opposite of justice is not injustice. It's often inaction, apathy, and indifference. It, we, we have low voter turnouts for our democracy this vibrant. Uh, we have politicians that on issues ranging from uh, gun safety to uh, uh, college debt that they aren't doing what the majority of their, pop, their, their voters want to do. And so whether you 
say you're a politician or not, the reality is we all have to get involved in this civic space, especially in a moral moment like this where so much is on the line. I hope all of us view us ourselves as agents for this country to make it better and make it a more perfect union. I agree with you. Okay. That's fantastic. You. All right. We, uh, we will be right back. Cory Booker, everybody. Hi, I'm Andy. Ellen asked me to remind you to subscribe to her channel so you can see more awesome videos, like videos of me getting scared or saying embarrassing things, like Ball Peen Hammer, and also some videos of Ellen and other celebrities, if you're into that sort of thing. Oh, God!